Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Clocked In with the Press, hosted at Altman Studios in Brentwood, California. In this podcast, we highlight news stories, individuals, and organizations that deserve your attention. For full news stories and to stay updated on the latest Contra Costa County happenings, you can visit our website and Facebook at thepress.net or our Twitter and Instagram at Press Clocked In. This is your host, Caitlin Gleason, clocking in. First up, let's get some updates on Ukraine. As of March 15th, over 3 million refugees have fled the Russian invasion, according to the UNHCR Refugee Agency, or the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. While the number of refugees fleeing the country is vast, there are even more in need of aid who are still in Ukrainian borders. In a flash update from the UNHCR on March 15th, it was cited that, quote, an additional 1.85 million people have been displaced internally within the country. An estimated 12.65 million people have been affected in the area's hardest hit by the war within Ukraine, end quote. These individuals who remain in the country have been described in the UNHCR update as being, quote, trapped in areas of escalating conflict and, with essential services disrupted, are unable to meet their basic needs, including food, water, and medicines, end quote. Aside from the number of individuals displaced by the Russian invasion, there have been many deadly attacks on civilian areas that have taken life. The UNHCR cited in their update that, quote, as of midnight on March 12th, the OHCHR, Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, had confirmed that at least 1,663 civilian casualties, including 596 civilians killed, actual numbers are likely much higher, end quote. Recently, President Zelensky made an appeal to U.S. Congress for aid. While NATO and the U.S. continue to refuse to set up a no-fly zone in Ukraine, they did commit to sending many weapons, armor, and military gear. On Wednesday, the U.S. said it would give Ukraine a significant amount of equipment for the Ukrainian people to use. Here is a list of the arms and equipment that were announced. First, an S-300 long-range missile defense system. This system, much like the U.S. Patriot system, is ground-based, fully automated radar and missile launcher unit that detects, tracks, and fires at multiple incoming aerial threats at longer distances. This type of system, hopefully, will aid Ukraine as it defends its skies. Secondly, we have 100 switchblade drones, dubbed kamikaze drones, which are remote-controlled flying bombs with cameras on them that plunge onto a target and explode on contact. Thirdly, we have anti-aircraft stingers and St. Javelins. NATO and the U.S. have already provided around 17,000 shoulder-launched self-guided missiles that are heavily being used in the close-quarter ground war. Other weapons include thousands of guns, 7,000 anti-armor weapons, 20 million rounds of small arms ammunition, and 25,000 sets of body armor and helmets. Locally, there are many individuals hoping to somehow make a difference with aid to Ukraine. There was a recent announcement of Ukrainian relief support from Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser is creating a donation campaign to provide funds to aid the refugee crisis in Ukraine caused by the Russian invasion. The program was created for physicians and employees who wish to donate to nonprofit relief organizations that would provide direct aid. Quote, the program was announced March 1st, and in less than two days, employees and physicians donated more than $200,000 in relief funds, ensuring the organization will contribute at least $400,000 for Ukrainian relief, end quote, the organization stated in a news release. Donations continue to come in to support the three nonprofit relief organizations included in this matching effort, who are all providing direct aid. Direct Relief, Global Empowerment Mission, and World Central Kitchen. They were chosen based on a successful track record in disaster situations, and all three are on the ground in the region working to assist the refugees. In a closing statement, Kaiser commented on the connections that individuals in our communities have to those in Ukraine. Quote, Kaiser Permanente has physicians and employees who have ties to Ukraine, Russia, and other countries in the region. Many of the people in the communities we serve also have connections to those affected by the war. This diversity is a source of strength and provides an opportunity to seek mutual understanding, offer support, and work together for a better future, end quote. Next, the long-anticipated annexation of East Contra Costa Fire Protection District, or ECCFPD, by the Contra Costa Fire Protection District, or CONFIRE, passed its final hurdle on March 9th when the Contra Costa County Local Area Formation Commission unanimously approved the consolidation of the two districts. The consolidation means the following for residents. Quicker response times, a paramedic on board fire engines, lower annual fire insurance bills for residents and businesses. The conversation regarding annexation began in August 2020 after efforts to pass several different tax measures to improve funding failed. AP Triton Consulting LLC, a Sacramento-based consulting firm specializing in the study of fire and emergency services, was contracted to complete a two-phase study to assess what consolidation would look like in regards to financial and operational impact. The results of the study determined 
that the benefits of annexation would greatly improve the efficiency and effectiveness of fire and emergency services across East Contra Costa County. Both districts already participate in providing mutual aid across current borders, but have maintained their own operating, training, and administrative functions. According to the joint press release with the Contra Costa County Local Area Formation Commission's actions, CONFIRE, quote, will complete the operational and administrative consolidation of the two entities. When complete, CONFIRE will absorb the firefighting staff, support staff facilities, and equipment of the ECCFPD, and the newly merged organization will provide improved fire and emergency services to the more than 128,000 residents of eastern Contra Costa County, end quote. June 30th will be the last day ECCFPD will operate as its own department. Next up, the city of Brentwood has received a development application for a 151-room La Quinta and Hawthorne Suites by Wyndham Hotel, proposed for 2325 Sand Creek Road within the streets of Brentwood Shopping Center. The proposed project is under review with the City of Brentwood Community Development Department. The proposed hotel will nearly double the amount of hotel rooms available in the Brentwood market serving business and leisure travelers alike. The City of Brentwood Economic Development Strategic Plan invests city resources into strengthening and expanding the local hospitality industry to meet the needs of tourists, workers, and residents, city officials said. The new hotel will be developed by Jai Bohai LLC and operated by Alias Management Group, a California hospitality company seeking its first expansion into the Bay Area market. The dual brand is slated to include 105 La Quinta guest rooms and suites and 46 Hawthorne suites. The next story is that in the city of Oakley was named one of the safest small cities in California in a recent economic study based on the city's crime data. The study, done by personal finance website MoneyGeek.com, used crime statistics from the FBI for 2019 and determined the economic cost of crime, according to the website. Using this cost analysis, MoneyGeek determined the safest small cities, those with a population between 30,000 and 100,000, based on how high or low the cost of crime was in each city. The 2020 U.S. Census shows Oakley's population at 43,357. The study was done using research from professors at the University of Miami and the University of Colorado, Denver. Using this information, Oakley was named the 11th safest small city in California, with a cost of crime being $194 annually. Comparatively, Brentwood has a cost of crime estimated at $607 annually. Antioch was not included in the same study due to its population being over 100,000. Other notable Contra Costa County cities that ranked highly on the list include San Ramon and Danville, ranked 5th and 2nd, respectively. Rancho Santa Margarita in Orange County was ranked the safest small city in California. Nationally, Oakley was ranked the 126th safest city in the country out of 952 cities studied. Lastly, an ATM was stolen from a Brentwood shopping center on March 11th, but later was recovered without any money being stolen from the machine. When police arrived at 2540 Sand Creek Road just after 4.30 a.m., witnesses reported seeing a tractor removing the machine, according to a press release put out by the department later that afternoon. The tractor was no longer on the scene when officers arrived, but had caused significant damage to the building. Officers concluded after a preliminary investigation the tractor had been stolen from a nearby construction site in order to steal the ATM, according to the press release. The machine was later found dumped in an open field on Sand Creek Road west of Highway 4, about 100 yards away from the shopping center. Police say there was no money lost due to the vault being recovered intact. No further information was made available, including potential suspects due to the ongoing nature of the investigation. That's it for today's episode of Clocked In with the Press. I appreciate you taking the time to listen in, and I look forward to speaking with you in future episodes. If you would like to read more news stories of Contra Costa County, you can do so through our website at www.thepress.net or through our Twitter and Instagram at Press Clocked In. Please contact us with your thoughts on this episode or any other episode before it. That's all that I have for you today, and I will speak with you all next time. This is Caitlin Gleason, Clocking Out.